G'day, how you going? The Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel where I like to teach beginners and advanced beginners what you can paint in acrylic. And just remember, you can do it. You'll see the size of my canvas on the screen and also the colours running up as well. They're what I've choose to use in this tutorial today. Now this one's a bit different. I'm going to try and go just knife only in this one. It's going to be an ocean, rock, coastal type of scene. And I've got me tape over here where I'm going to start with the sky first and I want to start with the darker colors and bring the lighter ones forward so get on over here and let's get right into it so I've got my sky from the top of this tape it looks a bit crooked I want to get that straight and I want to get the hazy color of the sky going into the natural colors okay so I've got some French ultramarine and white and I want to make I'm get a bit more white than that and I want to make a beautiful hazy color on the horizon there. Now I'm going to need quite a bit. Now I'm just going to use a knife all the way through this. A little bit more French. French ultramarine blue and white. I just want that light purple haze. Now this is only going to go from about there. Nice big thick bits of paint on here. Push it across. The, the knife can get it on nice and thick. Now if you're going to do knife paintings I feel if you going to you can use the thicker structured paint instead of the more flowing paint if we get all that on there to the height i want there we go and we can also use a brush if i want to soften it down with a brush now in that color we got there i'll get it all in the middle a bit more i want to add more french get it in a bit more blue up into the middle of the sky Mix it right up. Make sure you've got enough. So I'm going to have to add more white and more blue, French ultramarine. There we go. I'll just wipe my knife so I don't get any of that stuff hindering it and it's nice and clean again. How's that? Yeah, that's looking all right. Now I want to get this pulled across there like so. I don't want to come too much into that low bit and contaminate this first. I want to get it on there first. So just pick it up, push it on, push it on, push it on nice and thick and I'll get that a little bit higher. I'm happy with that, look at that. Get it a little bit higher, break it up here and there. Now I've got that colour there which I'll make a little bit more, don't need too much more of it, just a little bit more. And now we're going to add our phalo blue, which is a lot more, see the difference there. A bit more white, a bit more white. There we go. Okay, so I'll start from the top, pull it down. Get it right on it. My main aim is to get it where the white canvas is, push it along. Careful not to knife your tape to buggery. And then I'll start bringing it down to the other colour just under it. Make sure you've got enough paint for the size of your canvas. See I've knocked the tape there so just be aware of that. Watch this video a couple of times if you want to paint this way. It's just an impressionistic. Now what I want to do, I'll get the knife and just thin it down a bit. There we go. Nice and thick. Beautiful. I'm going to wipe the paint off the knife there. I've got a rag on the back of my caddy here. And I want to kind of just blur those two up without doing too much silly business. Get it roughly where I want. Just these two first. Wipe the knife again. Going to be a lot of knife wiping in this, but that's all the fun of it. And now here, get these two merging. Now I'm going to grab a big brush, a nice big brush. Okay, now I've got a, a, a big brush. It's uh, it's quite coarse hairs on it. I don't even, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what this brush is called, but I'm, I think they call it a hake brush. But something like this, I can just push... The, soften the colours down, get some impressionistic marks in there, wipe it, wipe it and get that blue pushed. Get 
just, I've got too much blue down here. I can add more white, hazy color there to it if I want. But there we go. Now, uh, want some French over here. Get some French, enough. Uh, some permanent linen. Get some white. More French. More French. It's too much on the red side. I want it on the blue side. This is just going to be the darks in the clouds. I want to put the darks there first. Now I'll grey it up a bit with a bit of yellow ochre. Just to get it there. That's going to make it grey a bit. If I put white in it, it's just going to make it more cartoony. And I'll probably just, I'll, I'll try and use a smaller knife, something I've got more control over. So I've got it on this knife here, and I want to try and from about here, just get the dark semi clouds there. That's a lot of paint on my knife, so I'll take a lot of that off, just so as I, something there. I'll wipe me. There we go, wipe that. Get this up there, there we go. That's it, beautiful. I've got another knife here, so I want to grab some white in that, but before I use pure white, I just want to dirty it up with some of that. So it's not the pure white, but it'll allow me to crack it up with some pure white when I'm finished. Okay, I'll start with this one first. I want to keep the top of this pretty much cloud cover. I'm stamping it on, just, there we go, that'll do. How's that looking? Good. And I want to, Get this one now. I'm coming from it, creating my cloud the way I want it to look. I'll wipe the knife. Because see, like even with this one, there's a lot of, there we go. There's a lot of heavy dark colour there. We just want it shadowed in. So we're using this lighter colour just to get this out here. Coming over there. Maybe we can get him a bit higher if we want. Now, I want to do the same again. I want to wipe that dark. There we go, just like that. I'll fix this one up a bit, just make it more pleasing to the eye. Now, we've got our darks in there. The darks are there. And we can continue with the amount of that mixed up dirty white again, just to get it the shape you want now with that dirty white so I'm grabbing a bit more on the brush on the um, knife sorry and I just want to kind of create that there we go just like that this one here can be right up there somewhere and I want to kind of get it down into this darker color here just so it looks lovely and fluffy and you've got a, a base to your cloud a nice base somewhere there it's coming out like that Get rid of that dark bit on the top there. Put some, oh, make sure, depending how thick your paint is, don't scratch right down to the open canvas, okay? And this one here can just sort of. Now what I want to do is just grab a bit more white into that, making it a lot more brighter, a lot more whiter. And I want to get some other clouds here, but before I do that, I want to grab a uh, smaller brush, okay? And let's see if I can smooth in some of this, just from the base up into there, get some impressionistic brush marks within it, and then wipe my brush. It's gonna fill up with paint so quick and easy, but I want to be able to soften them in a bit giving it that soft, silky vibe. That's what I want it to have. Doesn't matter if there's bits sticking out there. I'm happy with that cloud. This one here, I want to kind of, um, I don't know, go something like this. Wipe it, that's pulling up a lot of paint. And then try and get this soft out there. Push it. Same with this one. Now 
Now we're grabbing that pain again that we had on the knife and just probably get some bits up here like that. There we go. Put that down. I'm grabbing that brush and I want to soften that into my sky now. So I'm just going to soften it into the sky so it's not so loud. And now we'll just highlight those clouds with some pure white. So I've got pure white down here, just pure white. This is a yumminess, pretty much. Feel where you want to go with it. Here we go. Let's try and make this something there. Where are we? Something up here. Crowning the top and bleeding into the cloud. There we go. And you'll see the difference that this is making for a knife painting. It's quite nice, I like it. Now here I want probably a little bit there. And then mainly all this coming in the middle of it. Wipe the knife, load her up again. And have a look. Wipe the knife, load it up again. What is this one? This one don't need too much in it, probably bit of something there. I'll just rub that into it a bit and that's how we go. Now I'm gonna get, I've got nothing on the knife. I want to kind of get these base just smooth. 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 Get the top. Now this colour here I want to get a bit more of that. I want to just kind of come back under there and kill a lot of that too heavy brown that I've got there. It's a little bit too heavy, but go okay, there. What's this one? Too much there, I feel. Just so that we can soften that down. So the, the bottom shadow of the clouds is not too hard and distracting to look at the rest of the painting. A little bit just here, and you can you're more than welcome to go on your work backwards and forwards. It doesn't have to be all done in one go. Now I'm gonna simply fan and lace this out over here as well, just so it doesn't look like it was added there, it's part of the painting. I've deliberately there we go. And maybe a little bit here, see how we go, it's pretty fine there. I'm going to pull that tape off and I want to grab my brush and just soften that. So I'll grab that smaller flat brush that I had. And we'll, is that, it's pretty much dry so that doesn't matter. Now I thought it might have still been wet. This will be great in oils because oils will stay open longer. But you can add retarder to all your acrylic paints if you want to try this. I'm just softening that ridge of paint down there because we've got our horizon line nice and straight now. I'm just looking at it. Oh, this white here, I feel it's too strong, so I'm going to grab this colour, the, the French with the phalo. I'm going to grab some of that. Just what, I'm, what I wouldn't mind doing, see I've just put some on my fingers there. I wouldn't mind just pushing some of that white back. I feel I've, I've put it on a little bit too loud and proud there. So I'm just kind of sinking this back. Use a knife, use your fingers, it's all impressionistic art. This is fantastic to do. You'll have fun doing it. Uh, I'll just get rid of those three marks there, there we go. And you still can see some of the white there, that's fine, but at least I've killed the heaviness of it down. All right, now see the clouds? I've done a little bit there so you can see off camera. I'm getting my glove, it's still wet, thick. I want to kind of taper them into the sky a bit. They are a little bit, for my liking, there we go, a little bit too heavy, keeping that vibrancy there, but just sort of softening it all down, push it into there. And I can add more white yumminess to these if I feel. I've got them a bit close actually. I could have just done one and a bit clouds. There we go. Push it into that stuff underneath. I'm grabbing just the pure white without any blue on it, if I can help it. And still 
get those fluffy bits back just like something like that soften them down keeping them around how's that look I'm just looking at my monitor there not too bad not the best but it'll do it's good enough it's working Now I've got my French and phalo here, so I want to get those two mixed together to get the deepest colour out there. French ultramarine and phalo blue. Now we'll add a little bit of white into that. Just so we can see what we got there. I just want... Let's get my horizon line knifed in there. I'm using a knife that's pretty level, like so. I... Well, I do not want to make it too liquidy. You want it with some thickness in it. Let's get that horizon line beautiful and straight. Because the very bit out the front there, you want it nice and dark. Take your time, don't feel you've got to rush like me. I'm always in a rush because I'm filming. And that's why, there we go. I'll grab my smaller knife just to pull that across the canvas like so. Pull it across there. Just so we're left and right strokes. Okay. Now, we're gonna grab the phalo blue, that color and the white to get it a less deeper colour, so it's not as deep looking. Now that's a little bit too much white, so I'm going to have to pull some of that into here now, and I'll just do it over here. There we go. I put too much white there, so I'm using this colour. Come along, come along, come along. Let the knife make up its mind how the painting's going to look. There we go, and the beautiful. Now, I almost forgot to put my darks in, so let me just finish this first. I'm going to grab this knife now. And I want to kind of merge them together. Get this up a bit higher and then merge it. Now, my paint's a little bit on the thin side. You can see the tip of my knife is trying to push down to the bottom of the ocean floor there where the canvas is. When you're hitting the canvas, that's the bottom of the pool. There we go. Looking good, looking good. Now I want to come down here where the bottom of the, the painting is so as we can get our darks in before we get too carried away. So I've got my yellow ochre. And French ultramarine. We're going to make up. This is a card I made many years ago. I've even done videos on how to make a colour reference chart. That colour there is what I want. So I'm going to mix my yellow oak and French ultramarine and I'll get this khaki type of colour. I added white to get that colour to this and I added black to that and I got this. So that's what I'm going to do. So we need that more blue into that yellow ochre there, which I could see, to get that grey khaki colour that I'm looking for because this is going to be my dark colours that I need in the painting. I'll get a few mixed up. So we've got this one. That's pretty much the colour. Beautiful. Look at that on the knife to that one. Where the point of the knife's pointing to, that one right there. It's pretty much matched. So I'm, I was able to make that colour because I followed my colour reference chart that I made up years ago. Now we're going to add a bit of white to that just to get it the vibe we want. So keep pulling some white into that. No, 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 sorry, not white. I want the black, sorry. So I made my mistake. I want some black into that to give it that dark vibe. I will add a little bit of white just to grey it up a bit. Because that's me rock colour. 
There we go, that's, that's getting there, that's perfect. So obviously, in my directions on my card, I did add white into it, then I added the black to get this color, not just black or white, if you understand what I mean. Now I wanna get black as well, so I'll pull some of this over here. I'll just mix it with what's on my knife. And I wanna get the dark colors in first, and then we can bring the lighter colors more forward. So I know that's something here. Well, there's gonna be, well, no, something here. Uh, where I'll we'll get this one right off the painting there. There we go there. Get some more darker bits here. Uh, there, just mapping it out here and there with me, um, no, oh, get over there you. My knife ferrule's fallen off the knife. Some bits darkness here that first color I mixed up with the white it's a lot lighter than this so but these are our darks that we need probably nothing there where else probably and bits sticking out here it's gonna be a beautiful rock getting splattered and smashed by a wave. So I might make that a bit bigger. It looks a bit small for there. I might put a bit of red into that now just to add some luster. So when you're looking at the painting in real life, you're gonna see this magenta within there. Oh, I could see that now. The camera might not be picking it up. I don't know, but the main rock, I want that color within it. It's gonna look good. Okay, we've got our darks there. Now I've got some raw sienna, yellow ochre here, so we'll get some of this going there, just to get a more warmer vibe there. I need more yellow ochre. I'll have to get more out of the tube. This black put into there. Just mixing it up to this value, a sort of a, kind of a mid-tone value. A bit more of this, I've put too much black into it. But that's the colour I want. It's kind of grey, dark, browny tinges in it. I want to get some of this down there. Bits of it here. problem is I don't feel I might have mixed enough of it get it all in there these are just so many different types of rocks in here it's unbelievable I'm just adding the darks so I was um, we can gradually bring the lights within it. Now these are the like the darker colors. I'll grab that brush again or a brush and I'll try and just impressionize this together just like so. Because we're going to put a lot more lighter values within this we've just moved it all together bits out there i think that can go a little bit higher there big and higher yeah get some of these darks back in there there we go this rock here I would like some more darker moments in it, so I'll even get some darker in there. But anyway. Now we'll get the rest of that water in. Now down here, this colour we had before, the French 
ultramarine and the turquoise. I better put more on my palette, otherwise I'm gonna be in trouble. So this is all about palette work more as much as being up there on the canvas. So in this video, you'll probably see me doing a lot of mixing down here. That's all part of it, because you need to know. Get those two just mixed together so I've got a bigger blob. Because that was our medium, bit of white, bit of white. That was our medium color we had out here. We want to make that turquoise now. So I've got some cadmium yellow light, no, cadmium yellow medium. And we're going to get a turquoisey green color going there. So there we go. And then I can make this a little bit lighter as it comes shallower. And we want this now. Bring it along. I won't come down that far close to the rocks because that's got to be a lot more lighter. You'll start seeing the ground throughout it. Get this here, right across there like that. there okay there we go I will get a bit more white now because it's very very green looking so I'm just going to grab some white into that pile the more you do this the more you will understand your warm and cool colors within your paints now all this here is right along there right along there oh yeah wipe the knife and Push that out. Don't want too much of that black in there. This side here is a bit lighter. It's going to have some seaweed and dirt and nonsense in there. Just a little bit coming here, all the way across the two. Let some of it come across there like that. Now, I want a bit of dirty stuff in here. This colour here, the raw sienna, I'm just going to mix some of that with the, the black and a bit of red and a bit of French. There we go. Just this front bit right here, it's a lot thinner. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more of um, wet not wet there's a lot more darkness under the surface of the water that we could see and i want that there so i'm just going to knife that on like so in a roundabout way right out there let me have a look in the monitor there that's okay, that's okay. There's a lot of white in that, I really... Now I'm gonna get this and sink it down. I'm gonna find the darkest color on my palette of that, just to hide, see these white bits there? I just wanna hide some of those. And this green color that I mixed up, the turquoise, I wanna lay some of that back through here, just to sink it down. A bit of it can come out here. Now over here, I want to get that lighter vibe going as well. So we've got our, the cadmium yellow over here, there we go. And the blue. And on this lighter bit here, I want to try and get the glare uh, the motion of all this brighter vibe over here because it's a bit deeper but clearer water where this is more shallow that's showing the dirty seaweed and rubbish underneath coming along there somewhere up here let me have a look in my monitor there how's that coming along it's Coming on okay, there we go. I want some more of this colour. I'm just gonna simply wipe the knife, it's so much fun. Look at that, you just wipe the knife and you're ready to go with the next colour. I'm gonna grab this colour again, wherever it was, and just put little bits of that 
just beyond this rock here where the shadow is here as well. It's probably going to get hidden quite a bit with some wave splash, but we need it there for the parts you see, okay? Really impressionist. I love this, I really do. Now I want some of this darker colour, being that raw sienna and the black. I'll get some more black out there on the palette. Getting that raw sienna and the black just to make that dark vibe. And you can see these white bits here. I'm going to try and just disguise them, camouflage them. This is very structured. Can be a nice painting to look at. I'll give you a good look at it at the end of the video. I'll do a canvas tour for you, so we'll get the camera all over the canvas there, so you can have a look. But anyway, now I'll grab that green colour again, just to look in the monitor. Look in the monitor. Maybe let me just see where I feel it's too thick. I'm just going to do this in around this area here, just to see, because like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this painting, so I'm, I'm learning as I'm filming it. And any balls up I make, it's all real life stuff that'll happen for you if it's going to happen for you. And the way I decide to fix it is a way you can adopt to fix yours if you encounter any mistakes that I do through this. I don't feel I've made too many yet, but everyone's different. Some of you might have feel I've already made a lot of mistakes, but at the end of the day, when the painting's finished, Either you're going to like it or you hate it. That's a little bit better, I feel. Now I've got yellow ochre. Get some of this there. I'm going to make kind of a mid-value rock. Um, raw sienna. Got some white there as well. Where's my cadmium yellow? Is that going to... Oh yeah, that's, that's nice. Beautiful. I'm liking that. Uh, I want a bit of black. Is that going to help or hinder? That's that's plenty. Just to get this bit of a that black and the yellow is going to create a green vibe in it. So that's fine. It'll suit the watercolors. And I want some of this just laced in the rocks there. I'll see how dark it's going to look. Now see how I'm putting this on top of that almost dry acrylic there. If this was oil. It'll smear and be so vibrant, it'll be just beautiful. Some of these bits here need... I'll get this colour in at the top first, because those lighter bits, that medium tone ones that should have been there, which are not, need to be a bit more brighter. So I'll get some of this down there. Just, I've got to tape this. Look at the ferrule, he keeps coming off. He's giving me a nuisance of a time there, so I'll try and tape him back on. He can do as he's bloody told. Here we go, look at that. Okay. Over here, I want some tucked in. I don't need much on my knife because it's a small canvas. If this is a big canvas, I can go crazy. But I want some, just do that up and down. I'm gonna wipe the knife. I want the dark black just where I want it to be black. Just there, that's it. Over on this one. I'm going to look in here where I feel I want some more darker pockets before I put too much of the brighter colours in there. I just want some depth. This is just pure black I've got here. And it'll make the rest of those um, light colours stand out a lot more. If you like this, let me know. If you want me to do more of this, let me know. Or do you want me to stick to the normal stuff that I do? I just like your feedback. See, this is going to mix with some of this bright stuff here. Pull it through, pull it through. Look at that. You want impressionistic knife marks in it. That's the style of the painting it is. We're going for that 
impression look, but at the same time, from such a distance on the other side of the gallery, wherever this painting may be, you will see the perspective, you will see the water, you will see everything going on within the painting. Just to get rid of this dead, empty area here, I'm gonna grab the palest watercolor that I had, which is down here, because this is gonna have white over it, but this being a darker than white, will give it depth. If you just got white on white, you will find that there's no depth in that part of the water. Just knifing it on any old way I feel. I can see, there we go. Mm. And I can probably just knife that out there like that as well. Use your artistic license and go for it, man. And you'll know what good mistakes and bad mistakes you made. There we go. Now I'm grabbing the black again, just where they're a bit open here. I want to get some of these edges quite sharp. I want this coming up there. Wow, oh yeah, look at that, I'm liking that now. That's a bit bolder and a little bit better looking than what I had before. This one can sort of come there. Mm. There we go. All right. I went all the trouble to finding this color. I've mixed it up here and I haven't used it yet. So that's the one we need that we mixed up earlier in the video with the French Ultramarine and the Phalo. And this is our gray vibes coming. You need this to make all those blacks look the part. This in between, I want a little bit of it on here, not too much, probably, there we go, just like that. I feel a, a seascape smashing water is quite, quite good. I've just pulled a little bit of the yellow ochre stronger into that, you'll see now. Uh, I'm just kind of, I'll look in my monitor and I want to see just where bits are. Now this colour down here that we mix, we're going to start using that one now. So I'll get that one. And I just want to put this little bits where there might be the odd brighter colour rock. Something there. Maybe a little bit there. Oh, beautiful. Now I will grab the black put into that, mixing it up. So you go too bright, get some of this raw sand in there, go too bright, it'll look cartoony I feel. So see how some of this is quite loud? We can sync it back with some of that if you feel it's too loud. And I would agree with the other people that just agreed with it, that it's kind of done more justice than harm. I'm going to pick up a little bit more black just so as I can get some finer bits now like I want some right tucked in there. I want some of it tucked right in there and coming up here somewhere. Where else? Let's say a face here. Go. I'm grabbing my cadmium yellow medium and this colour that we had. I'm mixing a bit of that in there. It's going to go like honeycomb looking. Not too much. What I'm gonna do, I just sort of it on this rock here. See what I did there? I'm gonna, instead of doing a big thing like that, I'll just scallop some 
stuff like that in there just to break it up a bit. It's going to be a lot of water in here. Now if this is too much like I did before we can cut it back with a darker colour. A bit more black into that colour just so as I can Feel it's a bit loud here and there, so I want to sink it back. Can have a look at that. I'm fine with that. I'm very fine with it. All right, I've had a look at it over there here. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. You can go on and on and on. I want to get the white on there, but see this green that's here? That's the watercolour. I want to get a hint of that in the white so it's tainted with that colour there. So I'm grabbing that, and then we're going to start mixing our white. bit more don't put too much in it first otherwise you've got to start all over again that's why I put it next to it and I'm just mixing this white so it's a mint green color but on the canvas it'll look white and then I can add me pure white to finally add the detail and the details will bring it to life there we go I might put a little bit of a break out here come off there first That'll do, just something tucked off the edge of the painting there, just like that. Now I might use my smaller knife, and I want to get the depth. So before I do the water hitting there, I want some of this French and the permanent linsen. And I want to mix that purple vibe up. There we go, very purpley. And get some white now. There's a blue. There we go. Now, I want some of that water that's hitting that rock to have a little bit of depth. That's what this colour's for. Right where it's hitting here, uh, we'll have some first dancing in here. I'm going to just dance it. This is where the water's going to be. Dance it. coming some of the rocks are exposed from the water and some of it's covered up this is going to come all the way along here there's a lot of water here with full-on depth within it giving this painting full-on bullshit appeal I could have I feel if you're going to do this as well on your palette, have a good size palette, mix up a lot more than you feel you would need because if you do run out, you, if you're just learning to do this, you could stress yourself out. I want a bit of it just up here, there we go. Now this white that we mixed with the little bit of green, this is gonna be the, the darker white, and I'll use a pure white to Fix it up now. We want to come above. I want to come above that, but splice this in so you just see some of that dark purpley colour that we put there. Okay. There go. Just like that. Let me look in the monitor. That's happening. Okay. There's just drops of it. The white's really going to transform it. Now, this colour that I'm putting on, what I was trying to say before, but it gets sidetracked so much, is that purple, darker colour we put on, you want some of that seeing through this, so it's creating the depth. I mean, it's just knife work, but when you're standing back and telling yourself, about the painting, you'll see the depth within it. If you just had the white over there, it's going to look a bit bland. A bit down here, just where I put that purple. There we go, it's tracing in. And we'll detail this with pure white later. Now we're going to, I'm going to come this way first. So I want to see a lot of this purple. I'm going to mix it with, there we go. See how I'm mixing it? Getting it up there. I can paint the hard colour of the rock back if I feel I've lost it. I don't think I have though. I'm doing all right here, I feel. I'm 
just constantly there we go getting this color on there there's a lot of splashing up here as well you got to cover all that purple color up because that's just the depth all right i've got this green white green on there i had to turn the camera off because the battery was overheating so i had about a, a while of a break and had some lunch i want to grab some white now now this is the free flow white and i'm going to see if this will work or should i use the more structured white because like i said i've never done this before it's the first time i'm doing this style of a painting so we want to get um i want a little bit more i've still got the the green I pulled a bit of that in there, so it's a little bit paler green. And I want to try and get the white. Let's see how white that is. Getting the splash up there. Look at that. I'm going to have to try and get to that corner of my knife here. Leaving some of that greeny white there and also within that I want to leave some of the the purpley vibe there as well so as it's splashing up looking back at it from the other side of the art gallery you're going to see the depth within that water and this is the type of vibe that I'm looking for within this splash it's like I said before it's come from behind and just boof, hit that rock and exploded with A splatter over here just get some of this in there getting this where are we coming from behind that rock I want it so when you're looking you can tell that this water is from behind this rock and it's just splattered up into the air and that's what you need to try and do with your composition as well. Now sometimes we get a lot of white here over all the darks as well. Look at that. Going like this. Some of this white is right up in the air. Try not to do, I want this to be dots, not big smears up there. See that one there's a bit of a smear. I don't want it like that up in the air. I want it real dotty. Some splash in here. Before I finish it, I want to get a bit more grey into these two bigger rocks here. Just So that white paint that I was just using, I'm just going to grey it up a bit with a bit of black. And I just want to come here, get those bits there coming here. And then I can finish it off where I want to sharpen that water on the edge of the rock I can sharpen it so I'll get the black pure black now let's say this rock here get my edges the way I want them to look for the final piece and here you can have some slight darker bits in there but there All right, now I've got pure white and I want to get this detail up here. Some of this, what I'll do is I'll just put it on my glove there like that and my hands there, I can start putting it on. I just want bits of this a lot brighter. And now, hopefully the camera will pick this up, but if not, you'll see it in the photo. Or if you decide to buy this painting, you'll see it in real life. All my paintings are for sale. There's links in the description box below. My Facebook link is where you can message me and ask what you want to purchase, because I don't have a website for anything.
Now I'm going to get a, a uh, round brush, just a small round. Just so as I can get some details in front of some of the dark bits here, like there's, where's my camera? There's bits of it coming over the rock here as well. Just like so. Get some more, where else can I? Have a look, some over here, just spat it over here. And we can get some of these right up in the air as well. And I want droplets. I could probably go with the toothbrush and spray a lot of droplets but I want to control it, even if it takes longer. I need to have a look in the monitor there. Yeah, that's looking good. Bit of heavy stuff in here. Sprawl them out a bit. Droplet detail. Yeah. You really need to step back and keep analysing so you can get a gist of where you need armour droplets coming from or where you need less um, and that'll just help you put everything into perspective. I'm just going to sign this one, we'll put a frame on it and see how she looks, so I'll try and get my autograph way down here. I want to thank everyone who follows my YouTube channel and supports me as a YouTube member or a Patreon on my Patreon platform. Much appreciated. The links are in the description below if you want to be a patron and check out what other links I also have there. Now before I whack a frame on this, I'm going to peel the tape off just so you can see what it looks like as well. Okay, so we'll just peel this tape off with how it goes and playing with the tape as well. I'll get this off. Okay, there we go. We've got the tape off it. So we'll whack my frame on that and see how she looks anyway. And there you go, that's not too shabby. We got a knife painting, not too bad. If that was on a bigger canvas, the wow factor and the price can be way up there. Anyway, I know you can do it. Well, that was a lot of fun, exciting, different, and I must say I did have a lot of fun doing that. It took me on a journey within that art piece itself. You tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine, and feel free to subscribe. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.